Cambridge, England, a city steeped in scholarly tradition, rich with centuries of knowledge. Only fitting, the place that nurtured the likes of Sir Isaac Newton is now the birthplace of a whole new scientific revolution, one that is all about cracking the code of the future. Meet the modern day radicals behind it, a group of nine-year-olds armed with a bunch of rope and pictures, who at first glance seem to be setting up a huge game of hopscotch, but actually, they're laying out the biggest thing to hit British schools in a century. So the person at the front of each group now is going to be a programmable elephant. Now Peter Gaynard is a teacher at Histon Impington Junior School just outside of Cambridge. They can only do one instruction at a time. You can't sort of say forward and turn to the right. Just one instruction. Gaynard's lesson today, how to create an algorithm using something the kids can relate to local landmarks in their own village, like a grocery store and a preschool. I want you as a group now to guide your person from the start position to the Tesco's and then on to the infant school. So it should go uh, forward, They've done forward, it right, forward, 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 it's part of a brand new curriculum in Britain that teaches students at every grade level how to read and write computer programs. It's a whole new set of ABCs, where the C stands for coding. Forward, forward. Computer coding. This doesn't look like computer program. This is the sort of the, the precursor to computer program. This is where the children are now actually designing an algorithm. So they're actually de designing a solution to a problem. So what they're doing now is, is free from the constraints of typing in a particular computer code and language into a machine, they're actually working out the algorithmic steps to solve this problem. And so they're having some fun along, the way. Some fun along the way. Here's the man who started all that fun. Simon Peyton Jones, Microsoft researcher and accidental activist. I want them to feel empowered. Peyton Jones had a light bulb moment eight years ago when he realized his own kids certainly knew how to use a computer, but barely knew how computers work. They weren't learning to create the very programs they were consuming. I sat around the dinner table and said, what are you doing at school, as you do as a parent? And they were studying this subject ICT, and I found I could not make a connection between my, the professional discipline to which, about which I'm so excited that I've devoted my professional life to it, and the subject they were studying at school. Peyton Jones started a grassroots organization called CAS, Computing at Schools. It represents a step change in what we're asking our teachers to teach. The goal? And, uh, to create a new discipline, computing, and to teach it at every grade level. If you don't know something about how, how computer systems work so you can program them at some elementary level, then you run the risk of being the, the one who is being programmed. So there's a lot of fuss that led up to this. The revolutionary that manifesto that came out of all that lobbying is all of three pages long. This is the new national curriculum for computing in England. Um, it's only uh, three sides of A4. This one is largely blank. Like I said, um, I was expecting something a little more impressive. It's, uh, so I think this is impressive because it's short, right? So it says very unambiguously that every child should understand the fundamental principles and concepts of computer science. Britain's new curriculum makes computer coding a new subject discipline, like reading and writing, starting in kindergarten. It's a bold move, the boldest in a growing global movement. Australia and Holland are adding coding to their curriculums. Most of the EU is thinking about it. Hi, I'm Leah. And I'm Tanya. And we're lucky enough to be studying computer science. Hi, I'm Tanya. And there's a hard sell underway in the U.S. from the president. Don't just buy a new video game. Make one. <laughs> to NBA players. I know it can be intimidating. A lot of things are intimidating. Dozens of school districts in over two dozen states are now adding coding into their curriculums. And yep, Peyton Jones' phone has been ringing non-stop. 
the change in the English national cu curriculum has excited immense, intense international interest because they look at the new program of study and they say, wow, they're going to teach computer science to six-year-olds? You know, I've had conversations with uh, colleagues in the United States, you know, in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, in Singapore, in South Korea, um, in New Zealand, uh, you know, all over the world, um, Poland, uh, countries Canada? are looking. Can actually, you're the first contact I've had from Canada, I believe. So let's try putting it too close. If it's too close, it turns away, right? In fact, it's fair to say in Canada, right now, coding is for outliers. The stuff of after-school clubs and camps. We'll, we'll look at a while loop first. Or the occasional workshop in schools that actively promote science and technology learning. Good morning, Sandra. And then there are the startups, like this classroom in Oakville, Ontario. Okay, so quick try again. Let's see what the instructions say. You just keep doing that until it makes the school. Coding is not an official part of any curriculum in Canada. It's usually offered in some schools as an elective in high school. Why is he going right into there? I don't know. Not enough and not soon enough for teachers like Cameron Stoutman. He simply integrated it into his grade six math and science plan. It's so close. You can do it. I You're think it's so important for them. This is something that we need. The world is changing so much. They're going to graduate into a world where there's going to be a massive shortage of computer programmers. And so now if they can get that little taste now where they're excited about it, then when they go into high school, they'll feel comfortable and confident to take those classes, which will then lead them into doing it in university. And when they're done, they'll have a world of opportunity for them. <laughs> Good for you. Jobs are a huge part of the push towards digital literacy. There are tens of thousands of vacant jobs in the technology field in Canada right now, and more than a million projected in the coming decade. Okay, will you hold my finger and, and, and turn here? Eric Schmidt certainly needs to hire more people, and part of the reason Google announced a $1.5 million grant last fall to teach Canadian children how to code. The money is financing camps, but Schmidt told us then, schools must step in too. Knowledge workers are the ones that are getting the raises, they're getting the jobs and so forth. There are shortages worldwide in all of these fields. So the education system needs to change to produce them. But wholesale change, especially in a country where education is managed by each province, is not easy. Computer science is going to lead the way in terms of available jobs. Chris Stevenson knows that. Stevenson was a top educator in Ontario before making the move to Google. And I've never seen a more exciting time for computer science education. Where she now promotes computer science learning to teachers and policymakers, like this group in Buffalo, New York. The more I talk to people, the more I think it's about confusion. And I think that a lot of people assume that if the, there are computers in the schools and the kids are doing something with them, that they're learning these skills. And when I talk to parents, they are so shocked when I say to them, they're not. Stevenson says educators and parents need to start a movement and follow England's lead, starting yesterday. What's at stake? everything. I mean, I know that sounds very dramatic, but what's more fundamental to the health of a country than providing people with the skills to get the jobs that they need to have a good livelihood? And when we look at the rest of the world, educating their kids as fast as they possibly can for these jobs in this global economic marketplace, to ignore this for our kids is to rob them of their future. Okay, a couple more minutes. Hands Back in Britain, it's only been a year since coding has been in every classroom. These things conduct electricity. I and starting from scratch means a lot of room to improvise. So if you push it inside, you've connected it electrically. That's where the fruits and vegetables come in. It, it's quite, quite odd, odd because it's, you don't usually use them for much things. You just use them to eat and make, like, salads. But then it's good because, like, if you don't want to waste your vegetables, you could just go off and program something. It's a fun lesson in conducting electricity. Electricity that is powering up their own programs. What do you guys think of the fact that you've just created your own game? Well, um, it's really fun. It's, it's fun when you do it because you don't have any limits where you can go. You can, you can do what you want. It's like it's your world and you can do it. Lucy, you know, And for Peter Gaynard, that and is the most valuable lesson of all. As a teacher, that, that's the perfect kind of teacher, isn't it? You, you, you kind of 
blow out these, these, these sort of crumbs of learning and the children just grasp it and run with it. And it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's making it seem all the extra work that I'm putting in to, to try and launch the new curriculum. And it, it makes it all seem worthwhile for me. These children are, 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 are dragging it down from the top. They want this curriculum. They want to have that ability. They want to be so empowered with technology. And it, it's, it's, it's great. Looking back to this year, how would you grade it? Oh, A+. Plus. A plus. A plus. A plus for year one and for the children who are literally writing their own future, a future that is already here and may already be beyond Canada's grasp. Joanna Brumaliotis, CBC News, Cambridge.